Hi, and welcome to day four, our last day of new material over similarity. In this uh, video, we're going to be talking about proportional relationships and how we can use those to solve things like word problems and some real-life applications. Okay? So, first thing to understand, we can use proportional relationships. If we have similar shapes and we know that this proportion exists and we can solve for an unknown side length, well, we can do that in real life, too. We can make indirect measurements. So when we say an indirect measurement, that's any method that we, anytime we use like a formula, like a proportion or similar shapes or whatever to solve for an unknown, like a distance. How tall is a tree? You know, you're not going to hold up a tape measure and measure the height of a tree. Instead, maybe we can use an indirect way to find the height of the tree, like maybe using its shadow or something, right? So that's what we're going to be doing here. Same thing, though. Know, how tall is this building? Well, I don't know, but I can use similar shapes in order to help solve that stuff. I'm not going to hold a tape measure for, or do anything like that from the top of the building down. So here we go. Here's an example. A student wants to find the height of the St. Louis arch. They measured the arch, the arches, the arches shadow, and they measured their own shadow. And here's the deal: the arch's shadow is 90 feet long, and their shadow is 10 inches long. The student is five foot ten. How tall is the arch? Well, first things first, you got to convert everything to the same type of measurement. Well, you don't want to work with feet and inches at the same time because that's just going to mess us up, okay? So we need to convert everything, either all the feet or all the inches. And it doesn't matter which one you do, but if I convert everything to inches, I know the numbers are going to be bigger, but at least I'm working with whole numbers, no fractions, right? I don't have to deal with five feet, ten inches. I don't have to deal with ten twelfths of a foot. See what I mean? Okay, so let's convert everything to inches. That'd be a good idea. All right, so here's the idea. Here's the arch, side view of the arch. Okay, can't see the, how it's, it's going back into the paper, okay? And the sun's up here and it's going to cast a shadow, right? And when it casts a shadow on the ground, the shadow is 90 feet long. Well, let's go ahead and take 90 times 12. And that gives us 1,080 inches, right? So here's the height of the arch. We'll call that, uh, what do you think, capital A for arch? Sound good, right? Now, we're going to do the same thing for the student. Here I am. I'm standing over here, and I know I'm much smaller, but the sun's shining down, right? And so I cast a shadow on the ground here behind me. Here's a side view of me. I'm, I'm particularly skinny. That's nice. I'm looking in shape from the side. I know that my shadow is 10 inches and that I'm 5 feet 10 inches tall. We need to convert that to inches. You barely see that, can you? I need to convert 5 feet 10 inches to inches. So I'm going to take 5 times 12. 5 feet is 60 inches. So if I'm 5 foot 10, I'm 70 inches. Well, here's the deal. Using similar shapes, the idea is this. Listen, the sun's basically at the same angle for both of us, right? So when it shines down, this angle that it forms with the top of our body and the top of the arch is going to be about the same. And this is going to be a right angle because we're going to say that both the arch and me, we're both standing upright, and that means the other angles are the same, okay? And so we have a couple of similar triangles here. Here's what I know. Then if I want to solve for A, oh, well, looky there, I have a nice little proportion problem set up, don't I? I can say that 10 is to 70 as... 1080 is to A. Now I just need to cross multiply. 10 times A is 10A. 1080 times 70 is 75,600. 75, I divide out the 10, and A is equal to 7,560. Now, I could answer, as long as I put a unit in, remember we were working in what unit? We were working in inches. So I could say 7,560 inches. That's fine, I guess. I, I think that it'd be probably, let's go ahead and divide this up by 10. Okay, now, um, I think it'd be more appropriate to go ahead and divide by 12 and go ahead and say that that's 630 feet. This is why the label is important, by the way, because if you just tell me 7,560, I don't know what you're talking about right? But there's one indirect way. See, we didn't hold the tape measure up to the arch. We used our shadows in order to measure it instead. And that's a pretty typical math problem, so get used to it. Draw a couple of triangles that look the same. Make sure all of your units are in the same type of measurement. Everything's in inches. And look for a proportion problem in order to solve, okay? That's typically the, the process that you go through.
Okay. Um, just make sure you use units. Really. Here's another example, right? A student who's five foot six. Oh, here we go again. We're using shadows, right? Measured the height of a flag. Dumb picture here because that flag is crooked. Our flagpole is actually straight up and down. Okay. Here I am. Once again, so you'll see, notice this is two examples and both of them involving shadows. You think those are going to show up a lot in the homework, maybe on tests, maybe on the ACT? Probably so, right? Let's convert everything maybe to inches so I don't have to deal with anything else, right? Five feet is 60 inches, so that's 66 inches. This is the student, okay? This is the flagpole triangle over here. All right. The student cast a shadow that was five feet long, so that's 60 inches along the ground. The flagpole shadow is 14 feet, 2 inches long. Well, 14 times 12 is 168. Added an extra 2, and that's 170 inches, right? How tall is the flagpole? F for height of the flagpole, maybe. F for flagpole, right? So here's what I have. Well, I can set up a ratio. I can say like 66 is to F as 60 is to 170. Cross multiply, and let's solve. Keep in mind, everything is in inches here. So, oh, there's our announcement. Thank you. All right. 66 times 170 is 11,220. That's equal to 60F. Let's divide out the 60. F is equal to 187 inches, or because it would probably be more appropriate to put it in feet, divide it by 12 and we have 15.583 feet. Now here comes an interesting idea, right? What if I want to know how many inches that is? 15 feet what? Here's the method to solve that, okay? What I'm really curious about is, this is what I have on my calculator, what I'm really curious about is what's that 0.583333, right? So let's subtract the 15 off. Now we're dealing only with the decimal, okay? Uh, and your calculator, on yours, yours looks different. I'm using a different button, right? Um, I have a way, man, it's been a long time since I've used this calculator, to take my numbers and, nope, that's not it. 0.583. If I multiply that 0.583333 times 12, it gives me 7. This tells me really that it's 7 twelfths. 7 twelfths. In fact, I can check that. Oh, looky there. There it is, right? So really, what it is is 15 feet, then 7 inches. My method for that, once again, my, my method for that is subtract the 15 off of this, so I'm dealing only with the decimal, multiply the decimal by 12, and that'll tell you how many inches. Okay? So there you go. Um, let's see, it's an 8-minute video. Let's go ahead. I got one more example here, I think. Two examples, and then we're done. I'm just going to make this one long video, so I apologize, okay, as opposed to multiple small videos. We can draw stuff to scale. It's the same idea, right? Big shapes and little shapes, and they're all similar. A drawing scale is the ratio in length to the drawing to the actual length, right? So if you see a map of the scale of 1 centimeter to 1,500 meters, that means on the map, if you see a one centimeter distance and you're using a ruler to measure that, that actually represents 1,500 meters of real distance, right? Okay, so here's an example. Football field is 120 yards long and 55 yards wide. So maybe let's go ahead and draw a football field. It's 120 yards long. It's 55 yards wide. Let's draw a football field using the scale of one centimeter is equal to five yards. Well, I think the first thing we need to figure out then is how many centimeters wide should our drawing be, right? Well, every five yards is one centimeter. And if I take 55 and divide it by five, that gives me 11. That means I must need 11 centimeters here from here to here in order to get the base. Great. If I take 120 and I divide it by 5, 120 divided by 5 is just 24. So that means that I need a height of my drawing of 24 centimeters. Now here's the problem. Uh, I don't have a ruler that will do that handy right now, so I'm not going to, but I can, I'm going to trust you to be able to draw a triangle that's 11 centimeters wide and 24 centimeters tall. And it does not look like 
does not look like that, that awful rectangle that I just drew, right? So that's the idea, is drawing two dimensions, and you'll actually draw two scale with those dimensions, 11 and 24, okay? One last example. Television, and that's straight off the ACT, okay? Television screen sizes are the diagonal length of the rectangular. So when you see a 42-inch screen, that means what they're doing is they're measuring 42 inches is from here to here. That's what that means, okay? Hector recently changed from watching a television with a 13-inch screen to a television with a 19-inch screen. If a boxcar appeared 8 inches long on the 13-inch screen, how long will it appear on the 19-inch screen? Well, let's do ourselves a favor and draw a nice little picture here, okay? One is the little monitor, and the other is up the big long monitor. Now, 13 inches for this one. 19 inches for this one, right? We have a 13 to 19 ratio. Well, how, how much bigger is that then? What is 19 divided by 13? That will tell us what we need to multiply by. 19 divided by 13 is like 1.46 or so. Okay, it's about one and a half, right? So if I had a box car on here that was 8 inches long, shouldn't it appear one and a half times longer? Over here, 1.46 times longer, to be honest. Well, that's just 12, okay, if you do that on the calculator. That box car is going to be about 1.5 times longer because 19 is about 1.5 times as big as 13. Not quite, but close enough, right? If that problem makes sense, hey, I think you're ready to go. It's just about drawing pictures. Now, listen, the only thing you did differently today that you haven't done before is you had to kind of take a picture and you had to read some words and you had to draw your own similar shapes. But look for drawings of similar triangles, similar rectangles, similar whatever, and go from there. <clears throat> if you can draw a simple picture like what we did here, you're going to be able to solve any problem because the proportions don't get any harder. Okay? All right. If that made sense, you're ready to come in and work on some word problems in class. Be ready, have a